I know, you're busy eating, so you don't have to say anything. As you all probably know by now, I've been here so many times. I'm Marianne Holloway. I'm the current chair of the Academic Staff Steering Committee, and we have one more event after this um, for the year. And we will be holding elections and encouraging anyone who would like to be a member of the ASSC. We'll be holding elections, I believe, in May for uh, the co-chair, who serves as co-chair first year and then chair second year. And then also election for a member at large and secretary. And I think there are, that's it, right? Two members at large. Sorry. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, um, and so those announcements will be coming from the union to encourage you to run, and we encourage you to run. We've had a lot of fun doing it this year, I think. I'm now going to introduce you to our committee this year. I'll, actually, I'll let them stand up and introduce themselves. Hey, y'all. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Cynthia Barrett, an academic advisor, and I'm a member at large. I'm Dawn Wood, and I'm the ASSC secretary. Oh, oh my gosh, tell them to come in. <laughs> Sorry, the other two are sitting out there waiting for more people to come to sign in. So while we've got a minute, um, the next and last event for this year will be April 27th, and that will be understanding the roles of the ASSC, ASPDC, Union Council, couple of others, I can't remember, but all these acronyms we always hear about, it's going to be an opportunity for all of you to learn more about how you can be involved with these uh, various uh, committees and, and uh, academic staff. So, with that, we have our last two that just joined us, Shauna Rivers at Pharmacy and Health Sciences, and you are the member at large. Very good. <laughs> Sarah Doyle, um, Academic 2, uh, advisor to at School of Social Work and co-chair. So she'll be your chair next year. So. <laughs> Thanks everyone for coming. I'll leave it to Dawn who will get things started. We're not to fall asleep. Yeah, move on. Now start to use it. <laughs> so we've already had a presentation about ESS promotion, right, and also about selective salary. So this one here is about the professional record. And not just a professional record, but you and your professional record. And I'd like to introduce quickly uh, Cynthia Merritt, who's also going to be part of the presentation, and Dr. Cheryl White right here. And hopefully everyone brought a copy of their professional record. And on the table, before we get started, just to let you know, there are a few copies of the professional record, the template that's on the provost's website, the front and the back. So if you need to, you can refer to this as a reference, you know, as you're looking at your professional record, you know, to kind of see if you're following the template. So the workshop that we're doing today, again, it's going to be an interactive, we have some facilitators um, we thank the volunteers that offer to be a facilitator. There are academic staff that has already received ESS. Um, they've already gone through most of the processes here. If you're a newer, you know, academic staff member and you have questions, um, we can look up to them for their expertise. They're going to actually help us go around table to table to be a facilitator at each table. So if you have questions after the short presentation, you can ask them. And that's the whole purpose of this workshop. What we hope that you get out of this, as you can see here, is to understand that your professional record, it actually has multiple purposes and audiences of it. Okay? It's used for a variety of things. There are some common areas of what we call divergent or non-standard treatment of activities. Okay? What that simply means is that if you've ever um, worked out your professional record and you weren't sure of where does something that I did, you know, maybe an activity, an event, a training session, where does it fall? Does it fall under your professional achievement or development or under your service? So some things, where they fit in your professional record. Some things you may treat differently, okay? And we'll go through that in a little bit. Also, you may, as you're trying to go through your professional record 
and create it or modify it each year. You may not be sure of where things are placed, and you may ask different people. And you may also have gotten different advice, okay, and sometimes there's inconsistencies. So we hope to kind of clarify any of those inconsistencies and give you a clear picture of how to create and modify your professional record, you know, with our expertise help here. Also, um, factors, job descriptions, and selective salary are the guidelines, okay, for the professional record. Each department usually has a list of their own factors. If not, then you refer to your college. And then we also look at what's required for the university. And lastly, we'd like you to leave this workshop knowing how other documents, we call them companion documents, are related, okay, to your professional record, how they complement it. So when you go out for promotion, um, ESS, employment security status, how does that professional record, you know, how does that fit in all of that? Because that is one of the components of it. And by a show of hands, how many here are actually new academic staff members? Wonderful. Yes, sir. Okay. If I knew it would be probably like within, let's say, the last two years, keep your hand raised. Okay. Within the last year? Wow, so still quite a few. Wonderful. So we're all here to help you. Okay. And even myself, I'm not new, new, but I'm under five years, and I still have questions. So, um, so we could be here to help you, and I'll be seeking help as well. So what is the professional record? Okay, it's a document, right? And again, the template is on the center of every table. It basically lists different sections in it. There's a section for education. Well, you actually will list your post-secondary or post-high school education, any degrees that you have, and certifications. Now, certifications, uh, for example, if you're certified to counsel in social work or something like that, you might want to list that. There's many different certifications. Some of us academic staff members um, just went through a certification for advising, level one. And that technically is a certification. It's through Wayne State, but it's a certified program. Um, if you received a certificate for something, even if it's a training or program that you went through, that's not the same as certification. It's a little difference there. But also on the professional record, there's a section for job performance. And that's where you can list your main duties, your responsibilities of what you do for your department, and maybe even your college, okay? But it basically follows when you were hired, that job description, or what else was designated for you to do in your role as assigned by where you work. On the professional record, there is a section there for professional development and achievement. And underneath that, that's where you list all the uh, participation that you've had in conferences, workshops, if you're um, involved on committees, okay, you would list that there. And also professional memberships. Now there's a separate section for professional memberships and organizations. But under professional development achievement, these memberships are if you've actually served maybe on a committee role within that professional development, if you're on the organizing committee, and so on. And also on the professional record, you list your service. And it's service in different categories. To the university, organizations such as the ASPDC, Academic Staff Professional Development Committee, or the ASSC, which is this here. Also there's service to the school, the college, the department, which is the division. And then there's also service to the community. And this involves roles of professional associations. Okay. And we'll go a little bit more detail, and sometimes this is where confusion comes in, as to where to list service in the community, such as donating blood. Is that really service community? Okay, so you know, that was a question someone had in the past. And we'll go into more detail about that, but in regards to the service community, uh, community service rather, it's how you use your skills from Wayne State, how you represent Wayne State out in the community. And also on the professional record, there's a section for your honors and awards. So this whole professional record, what is it? It's a culmination of who you are, okay? And you follow the template, they set forth by the provost office, and you follow these different sections. And I'm going to turn it over to Cynthia, and she's going to go on to how it's created. Okay. So, um... How is the professional, can everyone hear me? I know in our conference, our previous conference, I was told that my voice is so soft 
<laughs> that I want to be able to um, allow you guys to hear. Can everyone hear me fine? I hear you way back here. Okay, very good. Thank you, Mariana. Um, how is it created? It's created by each of you. It's created by the academic staff. Um, personnel or whatever title you, you are. It's created by you. And there's a template, like Dawn had mentioned, on the provost website, which the template um, tells the, uh, ten, there's a template for, for faculty, and there's, so you want, you want to be mindful of this, but there's a template for faculty, and there's a template for academic staff specific which is what we list on the table, what we have on the table. But when you go to the website, you want to make sure you're clicking on the right template if you go to that website. Um, so the template for the uh, academic staff, because um, I know that a lot of, or some, have had uh, shifting in that template. So for consistency's sake, the recommendation is to kind of use this template on the provost site to, um, to in, 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 uh, in, in the, in the um, <laughs> uh, interest, in the interest of staying consistent. Um, another point to point out about the template is if you're, when you're placing your items on the template, if you say you didn't have an award yet, <laughs> So you may want to just list that as the title uh, so they'll know that you know that's a part of the template instead of removing that part and saying because you don't have a award yet. Um, because if they want, you may have an award and you want to reinsert that. So that's one thing. Uh, each, each unit or college may have their own factors to follow. So that's on the, this site too. There's other things on this site too. I'm sure we're going to talk about the factors. Um, update regularly. I found updating regularly the professional development of events, conferences, and workshops. I found that what makes it easy when I first got here, I was not doing that. I, I didn't know. I wasn't aware. So I just was, you know, just accumulating my information on a, um, you know, on a file or a folder. And then when it got time to submit the PR, I had to scramble to put everything on on this PR. So that makes it a little bit more difficult. So my suggestion is maybe once a month, or maybe determine some kind of time frame for yourself, maybe once a month or once, you know, every other month as you're attending these conferences, as you're attending these sessions. Um, go ahead and, you know, make your, your professional record and insert those items on that, based on that timeline that you create. So that makes it easier. Another thing that I found was easier for me to have in multiple places. So I have a calendar, a paper calendar, and I have an online calendar so that you can go and reference, you can go back and reference those items. I have three things. I have a paper calendar, a online calendar, and I have a, 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 a drawer of items. I just make copies of these things that I attend and reference that and putting the items on there. So that makes it easier. So now the key thing is making sure that you're updating it on a regular basis. Just like you tell our students, don't scramble at the end. Don't study at the end. Put your information on, on an ongoing basis. And by the way, everybody, this is considered a professional development. So all the ASS students So why is it necessary? <clears throat> uh, the professional record is required for these items, these uh, processes. Annual reviews, salaries, increases, promotions, and so forth. Um, so it gets used for multiple pur purposes. So you have to make sure that your professional record, uh, who's ever reading it or whoever you're submitting it to, is relevant to that audience. Right, so whoever you're, you're submitting your professional record to, based on these, these processes, you have to make sure that, I would, we, would, we would suggest that you're, um, you're speaking to who's ever going to be reading this. 
Now, um, so when you're submitting these other, for these other processes, you want to, it's not just your professional record. Your professional record is one item that goes with these other processes. So you want to find out what other items go with that based on the process that you're going for. So like, for example, if you're going for a promotion, that's not just a professional record that goes with that package. There's more than just the professional record. There's other items, and you want to find out what those items are. You can do that at websites, the provost website, or your own college or unit website. When is it due? It's due based on um, when your college or unit or division says it's due. So, <laughs> so um, it's, a, it's an annual kind of thing. Or, um, so, so you want to find out when, when your timelines are, when your deadlines are. So what you want to do is you want to ask or email your supervisor or your dean or your chair to find out when the, the, the package is due, when your PR is due, when your annual review is due, et cetera. Some supervisors or chairs may require that before the deadline, they, you have that submitted way before. So like for class, I mean some um, units in class, some departments in class request their employees to have, or their um, advisors to have the, the PR submitted way before the deadline is in May. But some people are due right now, are already done right now. So you have to face on your chair as well. You have to face on your chair or whoever your supervisor is as well. But you have to find out when your final submitting date is as well. So ESS, ESS and promotion is based on your contract or your eligibility. And a review is based on if you already have ESS is when you do that. Or if you um, if you already have ESS, you don't do any review, but if you are if you don't have ESS, you have to do an annual review. So that's based on those two factors. And then select salary, everybody has to submit to select salary. So that's the the merit. compensation merit extra money part. <laughs> so everyone submits for that. Okay, so where is the it? <coughs> so it varies by college, university, or division. So some submit to your business office, some submit to the dean's office, so you want to find out when, <coughs> when uh, where you're submitting your CR to. And then academic uh, personnel file, this, this is, maybe you can help with this. Um, one, the PR and maybe the reviews and all of these packages go to the college department or, or um, school and to the provost office. So uh, a record stays in both places. Is that right, Sharon? Okay. So hand it over to Cheryl for to bring up the anchor. <coughs>
I hang it on my tag board, and then when the event is over, I put it in my professional development file. So again, now I do have this stuff on the calendar, I have multiple places, but again, I keep everything right there. So when it comes time to updating my professional record, I do try to do it on a regular basis, maybe monthly, usually Friday seems to work for me, it's not as busy, but on a monthly basis, more often, whatever works for you. So that, again, as has said, been said previously, you're not at the last minute scrambling trying to remember where you went, what events you attended, or if you've attended a conference or you presented somewhere, so that you are consistent. Again, this document, the professional record, is a Word document on the provost website. So, you know, I don't know what we would have done before word processing, that's all I got to say. Because uh, it just makes it a whole lot easier. So as far as factors, yes. Now, factors are developed within your unit or division of college. So different, uh, there is not one consistent factors. The only factors that may be the same. Oh, sorry. No, sorry about that. Uh, the uh, factors are developed by academic staff. So you, when you are writing your professional record, as far as job description or whatever, even when you're going up for promotion, it's being used, they're looking at those items. Now, of course, again, they're not going to be consistent, but for some departments, if they do not have factors, there are university factors. So that's what you'll be, uh, the criteria that will be used. I cannot reiterate enough that you should start, for those of you, if you haven't started, it's not too late. Hopefully by now, everyone should have received notification about selective salary for their units. Is there anyone that has not received that notification yet? Okay, great. I know for me, in educational outreach, I'm kind of under the student services wing because ours are due Monday, April 4th. Uh, again, even though it's probably not going to be uh, due to other areas until May, but you, and there is a reason because you don't want to wait until the last minute to get these done, okay? Also, uh, again, if you have people in, within your own department that are senior staff, seek them out. If they have not sought you out first, you seek them out. And you really want to seek someone that is within your department. Because you may run into the hazard if you go outside of your department, they have diff may have differences. So if you can, reach out to someone within your own department. But I do want to give a plug to our academic <coughs> mentoring program because that is uh, a key too for and the reason why that was developed and Dr. Mayda Simon was instrumental with uh, coordinating that because we want to make sure that newer academic staff are successful when they get here to Wayne State University. Any questions so far? <coughs> now some common issues, there is an area, now the template that's on the website, something that we do within our department, even though email address is not listed for your personal information, we do include it. We don't get penalized for adding that because let's just be realistic. That's how most of us are communicating around campus. So I would suggest and put in your Wayne State email, not your Hotmail, Gmail, or Yahoo. So I even do, even though I have an alias, I'm using my Access ID email, the AI6959. Okay? So you can add that is an option, which uh, we have done within my department. Education, again, something that Don alluded to earlier, uh, the certifications that you may have received. Not all the different certificates you have received, say Best Advisor Award or something like that, that's not what we're referring to. You may be a licensed counselor, those of you who are in social work, those type of certifications. Now, if you receive continuing education credits, sure, you can include that on there. Description of present responsibilities, uh, that is primarily considering your job description. Your job description, remember, is going to be the meat of what you do. 
Um, but, uh, well, we can help you. But the meat of your professional development is your job description, especially when it comes to the selected salary. Now, as a suggestion, always update your professional record. Then when it comes time, because now for to get that little extra money for the selected salary, that's a separate document. So what I usually do, I always up, uh, update my professional record. Then all I have to do is copy and paste the more recent things for the selected salary. Now remember, the selected salary document is just for three years. The professional <coughs> record document is for five years. Okay. So you want to make sure that you're in the right uh, time frame. Now, again, you do want to toot your own horn, but you can't put every single thing down, okay? You want to, if you have to, pick up things that you feel are most relevant, uh, but you want it to be, but you do want it to look good. So, half the, the one thing I can say, having served on a uh, university promotion and tenure committee uh, for a couple of times, you want to be consistent in your format. You know, don't have one section bullets and another section narrative. Keep it consistent, okay? And the, the, some of this is kind of, the first two are kind of self-explanatory. Uh, your Wayne State employment history, some of you may have worked in other positions at Wayne State. List your most current position first. And then say any prior outside, Wayne, outside uh, employment for you say in the last five or ten years, you don't have to go back to you know when you work with group and workers at McDonald's. All right. And so as far as professional society memberships, please don't just use acronyms because sometimes the same four letters may stand for two or three organizations. I'm a member of the uh, American College Personnel Association, which I just returned from a conference uh, last night. So it's ACPA. Don't just put ACPA. Spell out American College Personnel Association and then in parentheses ACPA. Because when someone else is looking at this, they may not know what it is. I know there's a financial aid association, there may be an engineering association, NACADA, I know that's advising, but still spell out National Academic Advising Association. Or if you're a member of MIACADA, the state association. You always, when you write this information, you always want to write it out so that if somebody didn't know what in the world you do, they can understand it. Um, and again, for professional development, we're looking at perfect scholarly professional development. If you wrote a journal article, something like that. Now, if you just created a PowerPoint, say, for example, because I created this initial PowerPoint, that's not scholarly, okay? That's just, but that but that would go under uh, like today. I can put under professional development. I was a co-presenter with John and Cynthia at this event today. So a service which we mentioned a little bit a while ago. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but again, right on the template, it tells of university service. If you're on an ASSC, this will give you encouragement to run for one of the positions for the next academic year, that would be university service. Department service, if you served on the search committee for the dean, that would be department service and community service, if you serve on any boards or things like that. Any questions? Yes? Um, can you identify the professional development part? In the, like I said, are we following the scholarly professional achievement? Or is that professional development? Uh, for professional development, I'm not going to be looking at the template. Yeah, I had a, a concern about that in my own um, writing. Um, mixing the words as well, as far as professional development and achievement. And we were saying that it was a really for us, we kind of use them interchangeably. So right. use achievement stuff, what's on the template. Yes, name Dr. Sam. The easiest way to, to understand if you're in school for a higher level degree or a second master's, that's achievement. 
okay? You want something. Development, I went to a conference, I presented at a conference, I'm trying to better myself in my job. I mean, it's a fine distinction, and, and Dr. White is correct. We use them in, interchangeably. Faculty do not. Faculty could care less if they go to a conference. They need to publish, or they need to you know, discover the cure for cancer. But I would think as part of achievement as well is if you submit a proposal for a conference and it gets accepted among, you know, out of, you know, say it's 100 and yours gets accepted, somebody's going to get denied. So that would be, the, I think that would kind of be on the edge of achievement as well. Um, so to see, see how that fine line of development, is, because you're, it is a development kind of thing, but it is an achievement because you've got accepted at a kind of proposal was selected among a committee and such too. I, I fudge it on mine, I'll be honest. Yeah, but, right. I say professional achievement slash development. That's exactly what that, I do. That'll take care of all of them. Okay? And sometimes too, I think, especially if you're in a unit that has faculty, my unit has no faculty. I'm in educational outreach that we run all of the extension locations so we don't have faculty. And I think sometimes those of you who are in units with faculty, administrators in that unit forget that they're still trying to apply faculty criteria to you, and they should not. So always make that clear. Helen, you had a question? I was just going to say the way I do it is I put scholarly slash professional achievements, and then I have a heading, presentations at professional Well, yeah, that's, that's listed on there, right. That's right. first of... Uh, because it's, it's broken down under so that area. I'm, I'm just trying to say I don't worry about <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I just used, I think, I don't, I did not bring my copy today. I was, since I was gone for three days, you know, I had tons of emails. Yes, definitely. So if you're in school right now, you're telling me that it doesn't go under no. education? No, no, no. It should go under education. Have you earned your degree? But you know, have you, you earned, earned the degree? No. no. So it's not education. It should go, oh no, but I'm going to tell you what I did, they let me do. When I was in my doctoral program, I put, uh, what is it, educational leadership and policy and studies, expected date of graduation. So you can do that. You can do that. Uh, okay, are we getting ready to break up here? So if you have questions, then we'll break up. Yeah. So I have a question here. Our department share. No, I'll say you didn't share. Oh. Our department goes to uh, two national conferences a year. Uh, one this past, uh, past summer we presented at one, but we also attended for professional development as well. So we're not the only workshop going on. So would that count under? That, if you present it, I just put it under presentation. And then what you would do, if there was more than one of you, you would say co-presenter with and name all of those people who presented it. You don't have to list it twice because evidently if you presented at the conference, you did the team. Okay. Okay. Uh, Cheryl. Um, generally when we sign up for events like this, um, and you do it through academia, keep your oh, yeah. keep your history. That's a good reminder. And so when you are attending something like this, you can go later and look at everything you've done in that year. All, most of these events we do through academia. Every now and then somebody has something you register on Wayne. But that will be a record keeping track for you to keep. Also, if you do not attend, like so somebody didn't show up today, it helps those people. Now, there is a category on there that said, did you attend, yes or no? You know if you attended, because the results of this one may not get updated and say, yes, you attended. You'll see it sometime, but you don't have to be alarmed if it says no. That means we didn't report. That is a great point, Cheryl. Just let me bring them up yes. quickly. I'm uh, sorry. No, no. Yes, mm -hmm. Great point. Because someone, Robert, are you here? No, no I'm not Robert. But it happened to me, too. Okay. Many times it's happened to me. You do not have the capability. Robert Giles? Oh, okay. There you are. Hi, Robert. <laughs> this this gentleman was, was a term out of register for it. Were you also the one that said it's not showing that I'm attending these events? Oh. Well, that was Ollie. Someone was concerned that was about Ollie. the fact that we cannot, ASPDC and ASSC, if you notice, when you attend the event, 
events on academic money or training development, it never says you attended. It just says no all the time. We don't have the ability to do that at ASSC or ASPBC level. That's why you know you attended. We keep track, but no one's going to question whether or not you really attended and go to academic and say, it says on academic that you weren't there. That's not going to happen. If you ever need verification you attended an ASSC event, register there, and if you don't attend, remove it. Um, and those that can, because as Marianka said, the level is not high enough. But it's an excellent source for you to identify when the method of your file cabinet and your electronic mail, and that's the record keeping. The second thing I want to mention very quickly is if you use your electronic mail or your emails or whatever, your calendar is what I'm trying to speak to, um, when you receive this event, cut and paste this event and put it in the comments or the body of it so you already have it. That reduces you scrambling later this time of the year for whatever you're looking for. You will have a snapshot here. Yes, you can find it again, but my past experience, that's something that I've used and I was, that was shared with me. It makes it quicker because we're under salary. You don't have a lot of time to go through that file cabinet. <laughs> right, and remember too, if you do not submit your selected salary, you don't go get it. Not yeah. <laughs> and if you don't do it for two years in a row, yeah. you don't get the across the board. You don't get the across the board either. So you always want to train. I couldn't do it. It was two and three. I thought we want to break out. You have to do it three out of every five. And that's just the time you want to allow for your facilitators to be individually with you or on a group basis. So we do that. So continue eating and working on your professional record.